Spain and Morocco are considering building a $9.8 billion tunnel through the Strait of Gibraltar that would provide the first physical link between Europe and Africa. The Strait of Gibraltar is a narrow waterway that separates the European and African continents. Currently, there are no physical connections between the two continents, so all people and goods traveling between the two continents are forced to travel by ships or planes. For this reason, the idea of building a link across the Strait of Gibraltar is being seriously pursued. At its narrowest point, the strait is only 14.5 kilometers wide. At this point, however, it reaches a depth of over 900 meters, which is feasible for a bridge but far too deep for an underwater tunnel. In contrast, 20 kilometers further east, the strait is only 300 meters deep, which is suitable for a tunnel. For this reason, both bridge and tunnel proposals have been explored. The first concept was presented in 1869 by a French engineer who proposed a tunnel across the strait. In the 1930s, the idea of a tunnel was revived. However, when engineers realized that the rock under the strait was very hard and therefore unsuitable for tunneling, they discarded the idea. In 1981, the kings of Morocco and Spain established Sussexa, a company funded by the Spanish government to study and promote a possible crossing. Five years later, American civil engineer Tung Yen Lin designed the first bridge proposal. His bridge would be 14.5 kilometers long and connect Tarifa, Spain, with Adalia, Morocco. It would have three towers supported on underwater foundations, each 910 meters high, giving two five-kilometer spans. These spans would be record-breaking, each being more than twice as long as the span of the current record holder, the Akashi Kaikyo Bridge in Japan. Unfortunately, Tung Yen Lin's design was soon scrapped because the extremely deep towers and incredibly long spans would push the limits of civil engineering. In addition, the strong ocean currents would put additional strain on the bridge, and the link would disrupt the busy shipping traffic in the strait. Soon after, another, more feasible bridge was proposed through the shallower section. However, it would be costly, would still have to cope with currents, and would continue to disrupt shipping traffic. For these reasons, it too was rejected. While the idea of a bridge was discarded, the idea of a tunnel lived on. In 2003, Spain and Morocco reached another agreement to explore a tunnel. Sussexa prepared a design. The tunnel would be 38.7 kilometers long and would pass directly through the shallower part of the strait. 27.8 kilometers of it would run underwater and reach a maximum depth of 475 meters. The link would most likely consist of two rail tubes and a central supply tube, similar to the channel tunnel between the UK and France. The construction cost would be about $9.8 billion, and the construction time would be 15 years. It would be the deepest underwater tunnel in the world and one of the longest, but still shorter than the Saiken Tunnel in Japan. If built, such a tunnel would have great benefits. First and foremost, it would serve as the first physical link between Europe and Africa, boosting intercontinental trade and tourism and making it more efficient. It would also boost trade and tourism between Spain and Morocco, especially in Tangier, Algeciras and Seouda. The train journey from Madrid to Tangier would take only four hours, less than half the current travel time. In addition, the tunnel could use power cables to transmit solar energy from the Sahara to Europe, helping the continent transition to a greener future. The tunnel would also help the environment by reducing emissions from ships traveling between the continents. Finally, the tunnel would be an engineering feat that would allow Spain and Morocco to demonstrate their construction capabilities to the world. Unfortunately, however, such a tunnel would also have serious problems. For starters, the geology of the strait is not ideal. Most of the rock underneath is very hard. Unlike in the 1930s, it can be drilled through, but it would still be a challenge. Also, in the middle of the strait is a 4 kilometers channel of clay that would be even more difficult to drill through. In addition, the region is an earthquake zone. A tunnel would have to withstand earthquakes of high magnitude. In addition, there are already two major ports in Tangier and Algeciras. Morocco has invested a lot of money in the port of Tangier Med, which is now the largest on the Mediterranean and in Africa. A tunnel would partially undermine this purpose. In addition, it is not clear where the $9.8 billion would even come from. One possible solution would be EU funding. However, this would embroil the project in an extensive, complex, and lengthy bureaucratic process from which it would likely never return. Because the strait is so deep, the angle of the tunnel when it comes to the surface would have to be about 3%. If it were shallower, say 1%, the tunnel would be much longer, greatly increasing its cost and forcing it to end very far inland. Therefore, 1% is not desirable. However, a slope of 3% is too steep for high-speed trains. With this angle, the tunnel's rail line would not be able to connect directly to the high-speed trains of Spain and Morocco, partially defeating its purpose. 
Nevertheless, the project has been moving forward since Sussexa published its proposal in the early 2000s. In 2004, American architect Eugene Tsui came up with his own design. His concept called for two underground tunnels anchored in the seabed, each containing two 12-lane highways and a rail link. In the middle of the tubes was to be a 4.8-kilometer floating island with a hotel and wind turbines. However, Sui's proposal was rejected because underwater tunnels are largely untested and the strong ocean currents would cause difficulties. In the meantime, the design of the main tunnel was further explored. Unfortunately, a study in 2007 questioned the feasibility of the project, taking it out of the picture. Nevertheless, Sussexa continued to work. Then, in May 2018, an updated study by the University of ETH Zurich was published. It reversed the findings of the 2007 study and confirmed the feasibility of the project. Since then, the project has gained traction. On November 26, 2020, the president of Sussexa met with the mayor of Tarifa to inform him about the continuation of the project. With the renewed interest and confirmation of the tunnel's feasibility, a tunnel through the Strait of Gibraltar may soon be built to serve as the first physical link between Europe and Africa. If you enjoyed this video, it would be great if you liked it and subscribed to more similar videos. Also remember to read the comments and join the discussion. Thanks for watching and see you next time.